Your local utility company is responsible for maintaining electrical infrastructure for a community. All of the power poles and power lines form a network or grid that covers a large area and is essential to distributing power anywhere that needs it. However, there are a number of challenges in maintaining this sort of system. Problems like aging infrastructure and power quality affect overall reliability and are always a key focus. Overvoltage problems can cause permanent equipment damage and system failures, so protection is an important feature to all utility distribution. Today we're going to talk about one of these protective devices, surge arresters, and how they're key in mitigating overvoltage and keeping your lights on. While overvoltages may have many causes such as ungrounded transformers, ferro resonance, or line to ground faults, by far the most common is lightning. Lightning forms from charge buildup in the clouds. If enough charge builds up, it can overcome the air gap between the cloud and earth and strike in the form of lightning. Electrically, these strikes act as a current source that transfers the buildup charge, inducing an overvoltage that propagates outward from the point of contact. These extremely high voltages can propagate through power lines and damage equipment. However, Surge arresters can be placed right next to equipment to help filter out these transient overvoltage conditions. There are four different classes of arresters dictated by IEEE. Secondary, distribution, intermediate, and substation. This just determines the range of voltage ratings as well as the protection level. All arresters are mainly comprised of cylindrical blocks called MOVs or metal oxide varistors. MOVs are materials with nonlinear conductive properties. Normally they're insulators, but if the voltage across the block terminals reaches a designated threshold, then the MOVs will suddenly begin to conduct. Utilities will install arresters as close as possible and in parallel to the piece of equipment that they're trying to protect. For a transformer, the line lead will connect at the bushing and the load side is then connected to ground. Because of the semiconductive behavior of the MOV blocks, the arrestor acts as an open switch for that path to ground. Utility engineers will select arrestors with a voltage threshold far above the system voltage to ensure that under normal circumstances, the arrestor never closes in to create unnecessary ground faults. However, when lightning strikes occur, the traveling over voltage wave will cause the arrestor to conduct and provide a bypass path away from the equipment directly to ground. Thus, arrestors act like a trap door, preventing the lightning strike from damaging equipment by shunting excess energy to ground. MOVs can be found in every surge protection device, like the ones in your home. But since utilities are working with voltages typically above 7,000 volts, the MOVs used in arresters are much larger. Each block is usually designed to be around 3 kV, and then they stack together to form higher voltage ratings. In order to properly select an arrestor, utility engineers will reference its maximum continuous operating voltage, or MCOV, which represents the voltage at which the arrestor begins to conduct. The MCOV is about 84% of the arrestor's voltage rating. Aside from MCOV rating, there are also other considerations when sizing an arrestor. For instance, its discharge voltage rating. This value tells you the arrestor's let through voltage or residual voltage when it operates. This is important to consider because the equipment that is installed in parallel will also experience this voltage rise. Utility engineers need to ensure that the discharge voltage is lower than the basic insulation level or BIL of the protected equipment. The difference between these two values is known as the margin of protection. Every utility is different, but most try to achieve a margin of 40 to 60%. Like in residential applications, the lead length will affect margin of protection. Fast transients often have large voltage drops across conductors, so it must also be taken into consideration when calculating margin of protection. The geographical location is also important when sizing an arrestor due to different lightning patterns. 
Many organizations publish annual lightning maps that detail intensity and frequency of lightning on a regional basis, so engineers can estimate the total surge current that will be present on a system in a given area. The range of surge current ratings goes from 1.5 kA up to 40 kA, so engineers have to make a judgment call. They need to look at the intensity of lightning in their area and decide what surge current is reasonable. The higher the surge current, the higher the discharge voltage, resulting in a lower margin of protection. Data collected over the years suggests that less than 90% of surges exceed 10 kA, and less than 2% exceed 20 kA. Using these two data points as a guide, most utilities select 10 kA surge current ratings for normal areas and 20 kA for high intensity areas. 40 kA may be used to ensure protection in case you are unsure of the potential surge current levels. Finally, temporary overvoltage or TOV is also critical to performance because it's the number one cause of arrestor failure in the field. TOV can be described as the strength of the arrestor or how much overvoltage it can handle. Typically, this capability decreases as time duration of the surge increases. But Eaton's Evolution Arrestor is the only type of its kind in the industry where surge duration doesn't affect the TOV capability. This is especially important in single phase line to ground faults, which cause a voltage rise on unfaulted phases. This continuous overvoltage will cause standard arresters to fail, so arresters usually need to be derated to account for these faults. However, by having a duration independent TOV rating, the evolution arrestor eliminates the need to derate and gives utilities the ability to use smaller KV sizes. A big question is, what happens when an arrestor fails? A failed arrestor must be disconnected from the system immediately, otherwise it will become a permanent ground fault. The isolator is a critical component of distribution arresters responsible for this disconnection. It consists of a casing of gunpowder that ignites only on failure. This causes a controlled explosion that ejects the ground lead from the bottom of the arrestor, effectively disconnecting it from the system. So far we've only talked about overvoltage protection for overhead distribution systems, but we also have to consider the effects on underground distribution. All underground systems will have at least a portion of the feeder above ground, and this can act as the entry point for a propagating surge. Underground cables typically have lower insulation strength than pad mount equipment, so they're especially at risk. The process of finding and fixing underground cable faults is extremely difficult, so it's important to have arrestor protection at the transition point from overhead to underground. This ensures the traveling wave will be capped to the discharge level of the selected arrestor, well below the BIL of the cable and pad mount equipment downline. The voltage ratings also make underground systems susceptible to a phenomenon called voltage doubling, which occurs due to signal reflection at open points like open switches or other terminations. Arresters can limit the amount of voltage that will double upon itself. In addition to overhead arresters, there are elbow arresters that can be installed at the application of pad mount equipment. Utility infrastructure is how we get most of our power. Arresters play a key role in keeping these systems healthy and running, whether it's from a small surge caused inside a home or lightning strikes threatening outdoor equipment. To learn more about overvoltage protection and see it in action, contact us or your local Eaton representative to schedule a visit to one of Eaton's Power Systems Experience Centers today.